Hello, I'm EVM and welcome back to the channel and today I want to talk about my favourite thing in the whole world. Not me, <laughs> saving money. Now we all know that electricity prices have shot up in the last year or so and then going to continue to shoot up in the next year or so. To the point where they've practically doubled or more than doubled compared to certainly a couple of years back. So that's made electricity consumption, at least for me anyway, a much bigger deal. Because something that used to cost you literally pennies is now costing you, well, twice as many pennies. Do we actually know ultimately, this is the point I'm making, how much things are costing us? I've got a auditing tool, as it were, basically something you plug into each device and it tells you how much it's using in terms of electricity consumption right then and over a certain period of time. But the trouble is, if your house is using 500 watts, you don't know what is using 100, or is it, have you got lots of 10s, is there one that's using 400 watts and everything else is a little bit, you don't know what is using the bulk of that 500 watts or whatever your house is using. I mean, that's the only thing you can do. If you've got no solar panels, you've got no home battery system or any of that, the only way to reduce your bill or at least negate some of this massive price increase is to use less. So what I've done is I've gone around the house over the last month or so, really exciting, um, and audited, if you will, what each thing uses on average, as well as looking online at things like the Energy Saving Trust and which to get averages or UK averages for various other appliances that are impractical to do myself. I have found a device which is costing me a lot of money. 25% of the total electricity consumption of this house, if I ignore the car charging anyway, 25% just for one item. Most of the stuff online is based on 10, 12, 15 pence per kilowatt hour, which is gone. I'm basing this on 30 pence per kilowatt hour, which I think is gonna be quite generous over the next 12 months. Most people will probably on something more than that if they're not on a time of day tariff. So based on that new 30 pence per kilowatt hour, do you actually know how much things are costing you? Because now I've found out, I'm a little bit panicky, as a Yorkshireman does in terms of spending money. Now, before we go upstairs and look at the entire house usage on the whiteboard of truth, let me just show you the device or item that is causing me so much pain in terms of electricity consumption. I always knew it used a lot more than other stuff. I just didn't realize how much. And that's the whole purpose of this video, to make people look and audit what they do and think, well, actually, an easy change to my life can save me a little bit or maybe a lot. Now, the gas guzzler, as it were, in my house is this thing here, the tropical fish tank, which again, to me, it was really obvious. It just never occurred to me how much they actually use. 25% of all my house electricity is that. It's got two filters, it's got the air pump, and of course, the lighting, which has only recently, well, nine months or so ago, was changed to LED lighting. However, the heater, the thing that keeps the water to temperature, which I can, I can feel the warmth now, that is obviously what is consuming the lion's share of electricity in this. I'm thinking, I do like fish, I do like tropical fish. I've had them for like 15 years. I'm, I'm thinking goldfish, cold water fish may be a, a stellar move at this point. Uh, so let's now go upstairs to the whiteboard of truth again and have a look at roughly what the house is using just in general as UK averages and uh, see if it changes your mind. Does it make you want to kind of do your own audit and see if there's anything you can cut out? The column here, you can probably ignore that. That's mainly for my benefit whilst I'm doing the video. This is just a, an arranged, a random set of appliances and devices, and this is the cost for the various devices that are applicable to that. So that's why it's all kind of random. So I'll, I'll run you through it very briefly and quickly, just to give you an idea of what things actually cost. Remember, this is based on 30 pence per kilowatt hour. So what electricity either is now or will be very soon, as opposed to what you're on today because once your tariff expires and you switch to something else, it will be, for me anyway, at least 30 pence per kilowatt hour if you're on a flat rate tariff. 
and of course I'm assuming there's no solar panels or batteries involved or, or anything like that. Right, now aquarium. The reason there's an asterisk here is because this isn't how much an aquarium will cost you, this is how much my beast is currently costing me if I was on the 30 pence tariff. It uses 3.6 kilowatt hours per day. That's why I'm so kind of like, what? Because ultimately, if I put that into context, that's the equivalent of driving 12, maybe 13 miles in the Tesla per day, every day of the year. 400 pounds a year just for that aquarium. Now I like fish, I like tropical fish. I'm not saying I'm gonna get rid of them. For me, everything is about value. What does that mean to me? What is that worth to me? So for example, uh, a TV, for example. You, you, you're gonna watch TV a lot. And therefore, whatever it costs you to run is probably very cheap in terms of, uh, I don't know, smiles per hour or whatever you wanna call it. So if something costs you a lot of money, but you get a lot of enjoyment out of it, it's worth it. Right, now let me go through some of the normal stuff. I've not gone through the entire house. Again, this is just to give you an idea of what it roughly, on average, in the UK it would cost you. An electric shower. We don't have one of these as a boiler fed, and we have a gas boiler, of course, at the moment. They tend to run between 7 and 11 kilowatts. The reason I put this in is because, A, they're quite common, but B, I'm sick of the Daily Mail type articles that say that your electricity supply isn't good enough, or rather your house electrics will melt if you get an electric car because it uses so much electricity. An electric charger will use about six and a half, maximum seven kilowatts. These use six, seven to 11-ish on average. So an electric shower uses substantially more, in one go anyway, than an, a, a charger. But you never see anything in the Daily Mail that says, ooh, electric showers are gonna melt the house down or anything like that. Obviously an EV charger will run for a lot longer, a hell of a lot longer. But it remains, there's nothing wrong with the six, six, seven kilowatt charger running in your house. If it's been installed correctly, it will be perfectly safe. Right, again, going off track a bit. Apparently each shower costs you roughly 30 pence. And that's again, based on, all these are based on the tariff. The reason why I've had to redo with these compared to what I've found online is that pretty much everything out there from energy saving trusts and which and things like that are based on 15 pence per kilowatt hour or thereabouts. This is what I want to know it's going to cost me now or this year or, or soon. Look into the future rather than the past. Kettle, three and a half P nearly to boil half a kettle based on uh, those prices. Again, not really a bad thing, but worth knowing about. Microwave, <clears throat> generally run under, well, between 800 watts and a kilowatt, uh, in the UK at least, three and a half pence-ish to run one for about five minutes, again, I think that's very good value given what we use it for. Now, the tumble dryer. This is the uh, the greedy guts of the house, typically. And this is based on a normal tumble dryer, not one that has a heat pump involved. They typically use about half of a normal or a traditional tumble dryer. Um, but yes, four and a half kilowatt hours for a traditional uh, non-eco mode use. So each time you use your tumble dryer, four and a half kilowatts, which is at 30 pence, one pound 35. I won't call it a luxury item. And if you've got a baby or something like that, it, yes, absolutely a real big bonus. We've got one, we've used it, I think twice in a year. We're lucky enough to have a spare room. So that's where the clothes horse goes and that's where the clothes go to dry out. So I guess if you don't have that, if space is a problem, although arguably if space is a problem, a tumble dryer would take up a lot of it. I always think that if you had a coin slot on these appliances, so let's imagine on your tumble dry at home, you have about one pound and get some coins out, 35 pence in every day you used it, every time you used it. I think you would probably use it far less often. So if money is tight, this is the first thing for me to reduce. Washing machine, again, you can't really do without one of these, 30 pence for each hour that's on. Again, on average, not too bad, I think, really. Make sure they're full loads, of course. And of course, you can run them on uh, economy modes, which can sometimes reduce this a fair bit. Right, oven, electric oven, of course. 26p for each time, for each hour, should I say, that it's on. For cooking food, again, I think that's pretty good value. Decent, uh, decent return, I suppose. 
you can reduce oven usage by turning the oven off a bit sooner. For example, an oven will maintain its temperature for five to 10 minutes apparently, if you turn it off and leave the door shut. So if you've only got five minutes say left on your jacket potato, turn the oven off. It'll only save you a little bit, but every little helps I guess. Dishwasher, now this is something that I didn't know about until a couple of years ago. The one we have came with a house. It's a, it, it's a crap one that I think was put in by the house builders and it doesn't even have a timer on it, for example, which annoys me because I can't get it to run during the uh, cheap nighttime rate. But if it's full, it's more energy efficient to run a dishwasher than to hand wash it. I never knew that. Used properly, and that's key, a dishwasher is better to use in terms of energy efficiency or cost than it is to, to hand wash it. Trouble is though, not everything can go in the dishwasher and sometimes you need something there and then. Or I need that, I'm gonna to have to wash it now. Dishwasher, no point in doing it if it's half full. So I guess the key with that is, it is a kind of luxury, but as long as it's full, you're not too bad. 54 pence per cycle. Fridge freezer. Again, most of these are based on the averages that I found online. 122 pounds per year to run your typical fridge freezer. Obviously there are many, many variations. This is averages on averages. Um, so again, you can't really do anything with that. A fridge freezer has to be on all the time. You can get a more efficient one, of course. You can get a smaller one if you don't need the space. But other than that, it is what it is. Not much you can change. TVs. Now this is something that uh, I myself do quite often. I used advanced man maths to make sure my family don't waste pennies and then go out and buy a big screen TV without batting an eyelid. I mean, you know, I think we all do it, don't we? It's cost you 50p to use that, turn it off. Right, now we're going to buy a six, 700 pound TV. But you have to have some pleasures in life, I suppose. Now, apparently the average liquor to turf uses only five pence per hour. And given the, dare I say it, pleasure that you get from watching TV and you know, the kids or the evening films or whatever, I think five pence per hour is a, is a bargain, quite frankly. Now, this gaming setup, the asterisk is here because this isn't a typical gaming, as in PC gaming, not Xbox. For me, Xboxers aren't gamers. Uh, a, a gaming setup that I have, which I typically use, if I'm honest, for editing, um, although my daughter uses it, EVK is on it more than I am. I turn that on with the monitor. So this is a gaming laptop, the monitor, the speakers, and that uses about nearly three and a half pence per hour, which again, for an hour's worth of fun, or in my case, editing, three and a half pence, I think is again, a bit of a billy bargain. If you're looking into it, a laptop is cheaper to run than a desktop machine. Certainly if you use the screen built into the laptop as opposed to a separate monitor. Um, so right now, electric car, I've put this in just because it's the channel of course, and I wanted to give you an idea and compare it against other things. So when I'm charging my car, if I was paying 30 pence, it would be 8.6 pence per mile. That's how much it would cost me at 30p. But I don't pay 30 pence. I'm on a time of day tariff, of course, when I pay 5p at night. And because I have a smart charger, I only charge at five pence per kilowatt hour, which means every mile costs me just 1.4 pence instead of eight. 0.6 pence. This is now a good time for me to thank Smart Home Charge who are sponsoring the channel. You've probably seen them many times before. They're the people who installed my Smart Home Charger. And with that Smart Home Charger, look at the difference it makes. I'm saving over seven pence per mile that I charge from home. So that's saving me a fortune. They've also got on their website a comparison tool for home charging costs. Here it is now. And it basically gives you an idea of how much each tariff costs if you charge your car at home. And well, you can see it here. It's very useful too. Smart Home Charge don't just install chargers nationwide. They give you lots on their website and tools and stuff like that. And they help keep this channel going, which is ultimately the purpose for them being here for me. Thank you to them once more. Please do visit smarthomecharge.co.uk. One more thing, just because people will no doubt ask in the comments, the home battery system I have that has an overhead, you know, it has a, you know, electronics and it has an inverter which does my solar PV array and the battery. And that runs at a maximum um, of 7.2 pence per day. That's the overhead, if you will. 
So I just thought I'd put that in there because, you know, again, no doubt people will ask. Everything has got an overhead that uses electricity and that is no different. Um, so there is many more things in the house. This is not a video to say this is how much it costs you in your house. It gives you an idea for some of them. The point of this for me is to say, order it yourself. Get yourself one of these uh, monitoring plugs and plug it into stuff. See how much it uses. It, it tells you over an hour or over a day or a week, however long you want to use it, how much it uses. You can then figure out, based on the tariff you're on, how much it's costing you. I feel that electricity is one of those things because you don't see it coming out of your pocket, because you're not getting your, your card or your phone out or even your, your you know, actual notes or coins. It, it, it just gets forgotten. Uh, right, that's pretty much it. Hopefully um, that has got across the point I was trying to make. And uh, I have, after doing a few of these for our specific appliances, rather than using these UK averages, I have changed a few things. Although, you're, you, I will warn you now, you are going to drive your family insane for the next week or two or three or four if you decide to do this by unplugging whatever they're using and plugging that monitor in and then going, right, carry on using it. I'm just going to see what it uses. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. Thank you to Smart Home Charge as well for sponsoring the video. And, um, well, have a good new year. Fingers crossed this is the one that COVID disappears. Eh. Either way, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.